It's a good morning from Miami Beach, Florida. This is day two of our 21 day Caribbean adventure. It's about oh, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. I just got back from the gym and I worked out and we're gonna do a hotel review of the Ibero Star Berkeley here in Miami. I'm not sure the definition of a boutique hotel is called, but this is actually a really quaint little hotel. And uh, we've stayed here before. Karen and I were here about a year ago when we went on a cruise and really fell in love with the hotel. It's much cheaper than like the Ritz Carlton's right over here. And there's a Hilton, I think, over here too. Um, it's much cheaper to stay at this hotel, which is right across the street from the Ritz Carlton. This hotel averages about probably about $180, $185 a night. And it's really a neat hotel. We kind of did this half ass backwards. If you recall, we did the room review yesterday. Okay, doing the room review. The beautiful Ibero Star Berkeley in Miami Beach, Florida. So far, this is the second time we've stayed here. And uh, this is a really quaint, lovely hotel. We, Karen and I really recommend it. The uh, service and staff here are wonderful. Um, the uh, room is great. This is our bathroom. And for Miami Beach, the, uh, the uh, very beautiful shower. I think we have a balcony. Did she say we have a balcony? This is our view. And we've got, of course, we always have to look for USB ports. Looks like there's a couple there. USB ports are the up and coming thing now. Two on this side. Double door closet. Safe. Ironing board. Karen, is there, is there a uh, refrigerator? Nope, yep. did the room review yesterday we're doing the hotel review overall hotel review right now so there is a section the Miami Beach itself is actually right on the other side of these hotels here it's only about maybe uh, a three minute walk we're gonna walk down there in just a few minutes but uh, the beach is on the other side of these hotels there's actually a section of the beach reserved for the Ibero star uh, when you first check in they're gonna give you a room key and they're gonna tell you there's a section of the beach you can go down there and they've got some lounge chairs, I think even umbrellas too. And I think there's a little gate or something you go through and you check in and you um, have this little section of the beach just reserved for this hotel. So that's kind of cool. So again, it's about a, just a three or four minute walk to the beach, uh, much less in, in, inexpensive than it would be staying at some of the other hotels. And if you remember from the room review, room review yesterday, the room is really ultra modern. It's really neat, um, really enjoyed it. Had a great night's sleep last night, very quiet. And we're gonna go do a, uh, kind of a walk through the uh, the overall restaurant. They've got an outdoor seating area out here. And then we're gonna walk in here in just a minute. Restaurant. Bar section. There's Vicky Cappuccino. So this is the restaurant portion. It's open up at seven o'clock in the morning. That was a restaurant portion down there. I obviously don't want to film when people are having breakfast. I mean, that's not, you know, they don't want to see a, They don't want to see themselves filmed as they're eating their scrambled eggs. And they certainly probably don't want to see a man, strange man talking into a stick um, as, as they're having their breakfast. This is the gym portion. There's a woman in here working out right now, so I'm not going to film uh, too much in there right now unless maybe she leaves. But um, the gym is actually pretty small. That's probably one of the few downsides about this hotel. It's not very big at all. There is a treadmill in there. There's a um, basically a, a stationary bike and there's some other kind of a cardio elliptical type machine in there, but there's not a whole lot of um, uh, exercise equipment inside the gym. There's no free weights or anything like that. So that's probably one of the few downsides of the hotel. But I was on there, Karen and I got out there, got my fat ass in there and uh, got on the, uh, stationary bike and was on there for about 30 minutes and worked up a sweat. Uh, I have lost, I lost 16 pounds since retirement 
I've gained one or two back, so I'm down about 14 pounds, but I'm still down about 14 pounds, which is very good. I was getting pretty big just about retirement time. I promised myself that every single day on this vacation, I'm gonna be in the gym or I'm just gonna swell up really fat. I know that, so I don't wanna, I definitely don't wanna do that. This is the swimming pool. This is an awesome pool. Uh, this is called a negative edge pool, I guess. I think that's what it's called, but there's no really lip to it. Um, really, really great pool. And uh, this is our view. I think there's a bar here too, I think. Lisa said there was a bar. Maybe the bar's on the other side. Let's take a look here. I've actually never been to this section before. Again, we were here last year but I was not on this section. This looks like a, just a private um, place to hang out. This is actually really cool. View of Miami Beach, very quiet. That's another hotel over there. Actually, I think our hotel, I think our swimming pool is better than their swimming pool. Let's go see if we can, uh, let's go see if we can find Miami Beach. We are in search of the beach. We have literally just walked across the street from the Ibero Star. This is, I'm gonna show you this hotel over here. This is the Lowe's. This is 20 yards away from the hotel we're at. And this is a much more luxurious hotel. If you got the money to stay here, go knock yourself out. But this is uh, probably, I would just take a guess, a minimum of $300 a night. This is probably double what we're spending over at the Ibero Star. And it's literally 20 yards away. I mean, the Ibero Star is right there. So you know, if you want to double your hotel costs, you can stay here. I mean, I'm not knocking this place. This is a luxury hotel, but you know, you're, you're doubling what you're spending in room, re room fees just to, you know, have beach access or to see the beach, whereas I can, uh, I can just walk to it. Okay, this is walking into the pool area of the Lowe's. And you're not gonna be able to quite see it yet, although I can see just a glimpse of the Atlantic Ocean just on the other side of these trees here. Beautiful, beautiful pool. I mean, again, if you can afford $350 a night or whatever it costs there, and it's probably that, if not more, uh, yeah, knock yourself out. You're gonna have a great time, but yeah, totally happy with where we're staying at. say the water is uh it's actually relatively warm i mean it's not it's not uh by, by any means hot or anything like that but it is um early november and uh water's relatively warm not a lot of people in the ocean but a few no seaweed or anything like that a little bit of seaweed but not much probably the worst thing is you get a terrible view you've got these um ocean uh freighters and stuff are anchored offshore i'm not sure why that is and this is Without exaggeration, this is a uh, about a five minute about a five minute walk from uh, from the hotel. One thing I'm going to talk about the beach here, and again, I'm just unfamiliar with beaches in Florida. More, more um, my background is beaches in California, but the sand here is really hard. I mean, you could definitely they're all driving heavy equipment here, but you could drive an RV here and definitely park. I mean. Uh, it feels like as I walk on this, it feels like there is like maybe one or two centimeters of sand and then everything else feels like, I mean, it feels, it's packed, it's hard. So I don't think you'd have any trouble. You could definitely drive a car out here. I don't think you'd have any trouble driving a big RV out here. And there's a, there's a big truck coming up right here. And he's got no problem going through the sand. So completely different than California. California, you, I mean, I've, I mean, maybe certain sections of California you could drive a hard, a heavy vehicle on, but um, not a lot of it. And then one other thing, um, I've got to add in here for the safety portion of it. Um, it's it's difficult to explain. I don't under really understand why, but there's no homeless people here. 
I have not seen a single homeless person yet. And homelessness is a major problem um, across the United States. But when we were in Waikiki Beach um, a few months ago, we didn't see really any homeless people in Waikiki Beach. We are here at Miami Beach, and we I've, I've yet to see a single homeless person here on Miami Beach. Hopefully this wind's not, not, uh, not interfering with the audio too much. But I haven't seen a single homeless person here on Miami Beach. I can go into Phoenix, Arizona, and I can walk into downtown Phoenix, and I'm, I don't want to say literally stepping over homeless people, but you can see them every, every 20 yards. So I don't know what, why Phoenix can't do that, and Waikiki and Miami Beach can, but it's an embarrassment. So for the city council out there in Phoenix, Arizona, clean your act up, because I'm out here in Miami Beach, and I've yet to see a homeless person. But you can't walk in your own city and without every 20 yards in downtown Phoenix and step over a homeless person. But I've yet to see a single homeless person. There's no encampments. I'm sure they're here, but I'm not seeing them. So I don't know how Miami can do it, Waikiki Beach can do it, but downtown Phoenix cannot. So this is walking along Miami Beach. Grounds are uh, kept up very well. I feel 100% safe here. I don't see any law enforcement. I did see a single Miami police officer yesterday driving his car near our restaurant, but I don't see any officers here, but again, it seems very safe. There's no, uh, this, you know, if this was Phoenix, you'd probably see some trash or a homeless person sleeping over here. You don't see that here.